Hi, welcome along to the Tactical Insight Show. It's back. Graham's been away for a couple of weeks. By the way, how is your your mum? Yeah, she's back at home now, Robbie. Oh, that's uh, great news. Improving. Brilliant, brilliant news. Um, so we're glad to have you back, Graham. I was hoping that you'd come back under better circumstances, but it, it's not. It was a terrible defeat at the weekend. Not because, you know what, West Ham are a good team, right? And it's not a... There'll be other good teams that will go to West Ham, I think, that could lose and this season. And Man United and Chelsea have already lost there, Robbie. Exactly, right? However, it was the manner of that defeat. That is what's got everyone down. When you add on top of that the fact that we're being told that we can only get players on loan, and, and we looked at that team and we was like, what's going on? We didn't create anything. It was just, it was, it was a horrible game to watch. It really was. What went wrong, Ray? Well, clearly, I think that uh, we didn't create enough chances. Um, I think that uh, it's clearly unravelling with the team at the moment, Robbie. Uh, I think there's a clear case of Emery's... Over- unravelling? Yeah, unravelling. Unravelling. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is that Emery is sort of like, I feel, I said to you on a recent interview I did with you, I think he's falling in as a duck between two stools now. And that is that uh, to get, he's taken creativity out of the team to try and uh, beef up the defensive side of the team. Uh, he's so he's taken Ozil out of the team. Oh, yeah, I'll come on to Mesut Ozil shortly. <laughs> uh, but he's gone with three centre-backs and two holding midfielders. Mm. Now, in theory, if he's doing that, we should be a lot more solid. But the facts are that at this stage of the season, only Fulham have actually got, uh, less, clean, uh, got uh, less clean sheets than us. Jesus. We are second lowest for clean sheets. So, and I would have expected Emery in seven months to have this team better drilled defensively. And he's certainly playing formations now with uh, workhorses in midfield and holding midfielders, which, to, to be fair, I've always called for that sort of solidity. But clearly the team shape and the structure, uh, still, uh, teams are playing through us too easily. Yeah. So we've given up a lot of our creativity to move to a more defensive setup, mm. uh, and we're still conceding goals, and that's a worry. And to be fair, even during the run, we were still giving up big chances. Teams just weren't taking them. Is this where Emery... Obviously, we've got to be patient with him. He needs transfer yeah. windows to bring in the right defenders yeah, to play his style. Yeah, and I think we tried to fix our defensive deficiencies on a budget in the summer. And I think he's going to need windows. He's going to need time. But what concerns me is actually the fact that we're just not creating anymore. And uh, I've tried to look, if we come here, I've tried mm-hmm. to compare last season with this season. And right. uh, I took these statistics off a, a Twitter account, a guy in America called Scott Willis. Right. He does all these sort of Arsenal stats, and uh, if you ever go on to his, uh, if you uh, go on Twitter and type in Scott Willis, you can see all these stats. They're there mm-hmm. to see. So shout out to him for that. And what I did was I looked at this season. Sorry, this is this season, Robbie, mm-hmm. and this is last season, and this is chances from open play. Right. So, so in the whole. So yeah. Last season, four hundred and six chances from open play. Yeah. This season so far, oh, that's for the whole of last season. The whole of last season. But this season so far, only 172. Yeah. And we're about halfway just over through-ish. halfway. So if you were to just roughly double that, it would be roughly about 340. So we're like 60-odd chances down. And that is, wow. that is like two chances a game, isn't it? Wow. And certainly you saw that against West Ham. We didn't yeah. create nothing, did we? No. And I think that we've also moved this year under Emery to a different style of playing. Under, Emma, uh, under Wenger, we were more sort of a, a, a possession-based team. We used to probe around the box looking for that perfect pass, didn't we? Uh, get up to the final third and look to, uh, with Ozil in the number 10 role frequently, or uh, certainly wide right, drifting in centrally. He used to look to create in these areas. And I've got the uh, uh, statistics here from last season. Uh, we, last season, if you, uh, from the wide left area, where we're creating most of our chances at the moment with Kalazanak and Wobi, mm. Last year, we had 8%, 36 chances created in that area from the wide left. Mm-hmm. And on the wide right, 28, which was roughly 7%. That was more Bellerin side. More Bellerin side. So we weren't sort of like creating so much from these wide areas, were we, from cutbacks. Yeah. Most of our creativity came in this area of the pitch. The midfield. Midfield, where we were sort of like creating, we created 119 chances from the edge of the box. That's a lot compared to this mm. season. I'll show you in a minute. And then we had 12% coming from behind the D of the box. So basically, we were sort of like passing through teams last year mm. far better, creating mm. key, key passes, creating key chances. Uh, and, that, and we scored a lot of goals last year. And Lacazette and Aubameyang were high scorers last year mm. uh, in the team. They're high scorers this year, though. They are. 
Um, and obviously that's uh, maybe the conundrum, uh, mm. but, but I'll just come on to that shortly. Um, uh, so this was prime, what I'm saying is that Meza Ozil was in this side a lot last year. Yeah, I just see you've written that. Ozil, Ozil territory. territory. So this was his territory. This was his territory. This way he was creating a lot of this and, havoc. And I think this is where we're lacking this season. Now if you look at this season, mm -hmm. we've come, become our main source of attacking now is from cutbacks. Yeah. Emery has turned us into a more direct passing team. We don't go centrally create through the middle <coughs> anymore. We look to create in the half wide spaces with wide forwards and fullbacks. He's been suffered a slight uh, blow over the last few weeks in that uh, obviously Mkhitaryan, who was mm. combining well with Bellerin earlier in the season, is no longer available. And he also lost Welbeck, uh, mm. who's out for the season as well. People shouldn't underestimate that Welbeck injury because oh, it's been for, the huge. Sim for the simple reason, he could have done a job on the left-hand side mm. and also he could have come in and he could have rotated Lacazette and Bamian in certain games. Now people say, well, why mm. would you want to rotate them? Well, you'd be keeping them fresher, wouldn't you? Exactly. And plus as well, he was a, a player that you could bring off the bench that yeah. you know always made a real impact. Yeah. So if we look at this season so far then, 172 chances from open play, of which 30 uh, are from uh, cutbacks. Mm. 18 from the left and 12 from the right. Now, at the moment, and we saw on Saturday against West Ham, Robbie, the only way we were... Uh, we were sort of like creating was with the Iwobi Iwobi, yeah he Iwobi, yeah. uh, Kalazanak combination down the left yeah. hand side there was that nothing was, on the right nothing on the right and you know? to be honest with you Aubameyang and Maitland-Niles I, I think that was a partnership uh, that was never going to work I, mm. I think Aubameyang well Maitland-Niles never got the ball to him no because every time he got the ball he lost it but, but, but true but uh, I would it's another debate for another show but I think Maitland-Niles should be given a chance in central midfield I don't. Mm. I don't think it wide. Uh, wide. But right. is he going to create in central midfielder? No, he can. Because be, he doesn't seem to be that passing type player. No, but he's he? a physical running third man midfielder. We're, mm. we're losing Aaron Ramsey. Does that free up a position now for Maitland Niles? We saw at Man United mm. last year in the right combination. He played in a uh, in a pivot two that day, but he was driving from midfield. He can carry the ball. This mm. is one thing this team. I like lacks. Smith Rowe in that position actually. Of course. Mm. But this team does lack people who can carry the ball. Yeah. Who are physical and powerful in midfield. So just coming back to the chart here, look at the difference this year so far. Only 37 chances we've created from around the D uh, against 119 last year. So if that, so that would, that would be less than 70, wouldn't it? That's a massive drop. Yeah. And this is, this is the dangerous area of the pitch, Robbie. Mm. This is where key chances you're looking to create around the D, uh, playing your forwards. And we're not doing that now. Now, is it because Meza Ozil's not in the team? It seems to me... That, that, to me, I think that's... Well, listen, yeah. listen Mesut Ozil is our most creative player. Yep. Right? We've known that for years. The one thing about him, we always, you know, and other teams tease us and that and say he doesn't score enough goals, but he's, when it comes to assists, he always assists in players, right? Yeah. We've taken him out of the team for the bulk of the season, whether it be through injury or through tactical reasons, as yep. what Unai you know, Emery said. And that's quite a damning stat. We're not creating nothing no. without Mesut Ozil. And I think if Emery was winning these games, he would have an argument for not having Ozil in the team, yeah. really. But we're not winning the game. So if it's for tactical reasons, tactical for what reasons. you're showing me here, yeah. if it's for tactical reasons, those tactics ain't working right now no. because we've taken the whole creativity out of the team. And I'm on, on against West Ham. Honestly, I, I couldn't believe how bad we were in yeah. that creative area. I mean, you know... Xhaka Guendouzi, I mean, Guendouzi overhit everything he tried to pass. He, yeah. he, he was just not doing it there. Xhaka, long range passes he, we know he can hit, but short passes and, you know, he's, he's just not that guy, is he? I mean, I saw a stat actually, before you get into giving me a load more stats here, but I saw a stat that they said that um, Granit Xhaka has created more goals have come from mistakes that he's made than any other player in the Premier League. That is a damning stat, isn't it? I think what I noticed on Saturday was we've got uh, three centre-halves, our three... Uh, That's not working. Not working. We've got Mustafi, Koscielny... Uh, mm. Mustafi, Koscielny... Uh, Socrates. And Socrates, sorry. <laughs> uh, who basically are playing it into central midfield uh, to uh, Guendouzi and Jacker and having to take it on the, on the turn. Mm. They're just not capable of sort of turning. Yeah. They, they're not capable of receiving the ball uh, and moving the ball quickly through the yeah. lines. So, so slow. Too slow. So, but <sighs> I've got some stats here, Robbie, and they right. make very well, damning readings so just to, right. to, on this West Ham game. Right. And bear in mind, we were one goal down in that West Ham game. Yep. And the last 20 minutes, we were one goal behind. 
and uh, we were losing that game. We had zero shots after 70 minutes. Unbelievable. This West Ham game was the second lowest goal chances created this season. Only Manchester City at home was worse. Wow. The front, that's West Ham. Yeah. The front three only had 10 touches in the box in the whole game against West Ham. They had 19. Touches in the box as a team was down to 20. West Ham had 25. Touches in the final third as a team, 72 compared to West Ham's 99. And this is the most damning stat. Creativity this season. Shots per match is now down from 15.6 last season to 12.6 this season. Uh, chances per match is down from 11.7 to 9.2. Wow. It's really intriguing. When you look at that, those stats, number one, if we didn't have so many good, such good forward players, which is quite clinical normally, they weren't at the weekend, yeah. we wouldn't be, you know, because we wouldn't have scored so many goals. And number two, we're just not creating the chances for these forward. We've got... Good forwards now, yeah. good strikers, but we're not creating enough for them. And that says to me that Mesut Ozil has to be in the team, doesn't he? For me, he does. Absolutely. And I, I mean, I know a lot of people criticise him. A lot of people say about his defensive side. We've got to find a way of getting this guy in. Well, if not, if we don't get him in, we need another creative player in. Because even some of the players we've been linked with, like your Denis Suarez and that, We've been told that they might play out wide as well. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if uh, Mkhitaryan was fit, he could play Mkhitaryan at 10, but he's not. But he's not played Mkhitaryan at 10 when but, he's been fit, really. Actually, he's, he's played him out wide but, as well. Yeah, but, but Mkhitaryan could play at 10, couldn't he? I'm just saying he could. Yeah. That's an option. And why at the weekend, going back to that game, why was Torreira on the bench? I think he's played a lot of minutes this season. Uh, so why not start him and take him off later on? Yeah, uh, but I think it's that. He's played a lot of minutes, and I think he just decided to... Um, to give him a rest. There was an argument against it because he was rested at Blackpool, wasn't he? But yeah. he had played a lot of minutes up until that and he looked tired in the game against Liverpool. So there was, maybe that's his thinking. Yeah, that was, that was he, like, he, might, he might have had an injury. Two, three weeks ago? We don't know. Unless there's a slight injury. Listen, that's it. You don't know because that was baffling to me. And as soon as he came on, it seemed like we were, but then having said that, the stat that you're saying is, it seemed like we was creating more, but we actually, we weren't. Yeah, and they're coming out of the dressing room. I'm just wondering what's going on in the dressing room at the moment. And we, do you remember last year uh, mm. when we went to Anfield and we got tonked for nothing, and there was the uh, o, uh, Ozil Sanchez contract saga going on at the, mm. that time in the club, and it was a lot of disharmony in the dressing room. I mean, I just wonder whether Emery has got the dressing room behind him in this decision at the moment. I mean, Socrates yeah. has come out today and said we only had two shots on target in the game, but the key area really was uh, the key passes were missing into yeah. the forwards and Ozil is a light guy yeah. in that team isn't he yeah. I mean you know what it reminds me so much of and I was saying to on my transfer show um, today and yesterday the situation when Guardiola came in at Man City with Yaya Torre and you've got a player that's quite iconic because on big wages sort of been the go-to guy and he didn't fancy him he's like you don't work hard enough and literally, he wouldn't play him until he just literally bombed him out of the team. And the IR Tory didn't want to move on because he was on big wages. And this is a similar situation. But, but the only difference is, we ain't Man City. That's true. <laughs> we can't bring in a De Bruyne or a no. Silvers and people like that to cover it. Gundawans and that. You know, we've got to bring in a Gwendozi and people like that who is a 19-year-old kid. We've got to get Ozil back in the team. If we not, or we've got to move him on and bring in someone else. Like an Ever Benego, whatever, but win loan you, you, deals you, only. You've simply got to find a way to get Ozil in the team. You only have to look at what's happened at Manchester United this season, Robbie, with Pogba. Yeah. Mourinho, uh, uh, Solskjaer's come in and he's playing in now in the uh, cam position, the central attacking midfield position, mm. which is his strength. Uh, he was playing him in a, a, a two in midfield, uh, Mourinho was early in yeah. the season. It wasn't working. It wasn't getting the best out of Pogba. True. I saw he's, Pogba doing an interview yesterday yeah. where he said, you know, he goes, I was being asked to play in defence, you know, he goes, I like to get forward. Yeah. And look at what, look at the difference, look at in, the that, difference, difference now. in that team now, and look at Pogba. So yeah. this is a clear dilemma for Emery, but I would say yeah. he's got to find a way of getting his, until he's got the uh, money available to get his players in, yeah. uh, at the moment he's got to work with what he's got. And, yeah. and Ozil's one of his best players. Also, he's on 350 grand a week. And we have to remember that. Now, it seems to me, he's clearly saying to the board, I don't fancy this guy. I want him moved out. Yeah, but if the player doesn't want to go. And that's going to be the problem, isn't it? If mm. he doesn't want to go. Which uh, I wouldn't want to go. I want him 350 grand a week. I'm living in London. And what? Who, unless somebody 
one of the other big boys are going to match that. Uh, say Bayern comes in for him or Real Madrid come back or Barca or PSG, which they're not. I'm staying put. And this is, a, this is going to be interesting, isn't it? How this and it's a, it's a long contract. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll tell you. Listen, I'm going to clear the board for you because I know that you said to me, you've got what you think should be the formation for the game against Chelsea. This yeah. is a massive game now. Yeah. Massive. If we don't win this game, top four, well, getting top four through the league is done, isn't it? I think, to be honest with you, I think that I don't think we're going to get top four this season. Well, I don't, no, nor do I no more. I think, uh, I think it's, uh, But listen, who knows? We've seen the run that, that Man United have been on. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. But for you, the team that you play. Yeah. Yeah? I want to see that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Live, and, live TV, man. We've got to wipe the board out. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? <laughs> But I'll wipe the ball. You don't see this on Sky. Don't worry about yeah, that. You'll get comments in the box. In the comments, <laughs> Don Robbie wiping his own board. <laughs> Couldn't afford someone to wipe his own board. <laughs> exactly. Some Don I am, isn't I? What, what, what kind of Don am I? Yeah. Right, right, here you go. Right, right. Right. So, right, so this is the Chelsea game. Chelsea game. Chelsea game. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I think, pick what I think will be our best team to play Chelsea. Okay. Bearing in mind, we're struggling to create chances. Right. right. So, so I'm going to go, and uh, I've mentioned this to you before, I'm going to play a 4-4-2. Four, four, diamond. Alright. So I'm going to abandon the back three. And I think one, right. of, one of the things he's doing, he, he keeps switching from a three to a four. He hasn't got his identity on the team yet, has he? That's <coughs> I think thing. that three has been because without Monreal at left back, I don't think he trusts Kolasinac. No, true, I agree. Back. I agree. So again, there's, there's, always, there's always ways personnel. around it. You can work around them. Yeah. So right. anyway, this is the 4-4-2 diamond. So I'm going to start yep. down the bottom here. And I'm going to start with, obviously, Leno in goal. And then I'm going to go with a, a flat back four. Uh, so on the, uh, the right, this is the right side. Yep. I'm going to go with Hector Bellerin, who's now back to fitness. Yep, he's got to come in. He's we, got to come in. We out. have and missed, we miss, him missed him so badly. I know he had a, I know he had a dodgy season last year. This season he's been good. And you can carry the ball out from the back. We've missed him so badly. Right. So Leno in goal, better in at right back. I'm going to go with our best-sided right-sided yeah. centre half, and Socrates. And I think if we could get a, a commanding centre half Let's to put, put <laughs> no, I'm going to put Socrates now. And if I can, if we can get a commanding centre half next to him next season, he'll be even better. Yeah. But, so he can defend. Now okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Koscielny on the left side. He is left sided. Yep. Because Rob Holding obviously still out, out for the season. Doesn't carry the ball out great, does he, Koscielny? No, but 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 but, but he can. But, it's but, not bad. But what I'm saying is here. I apologise yeah. for going slightly wonky. But what I'm, what I'm saying here is we, we're not. And this is the thing I think we need to move slightly away for against Chelsea because they're yeah. going to press us from the front. I don't want us to be playing around at the back. I think yeah. we've got to. Until he gets the players in who he needs to play the system, I think he's going to have to use the strength of these players, right? Okay. And, and if they're not good at carrying it out, just play it into central midfield. Then I'm going to go with Kalazanak, and he's now going to have more defensive responsibilities. But what I'm going to say is, and I'll, and I'll explain this to you in a minute, he, I'm not saying he can't go forward, yep. but when he's going forward, I want my left-sided midfielder in this diamond to come across and cover him, yep. or, or if he's working with him, I want... Terreira, here's Terreira, he's going to be at the base of the, of the diamond. This is where he used to play for Sampdoria. So I'm going to have him here. He's going to be my okay. base, my anchor in front of these back four. So if Kolasinac is going up forward and going to com combine with Wobi on the left, I want Terreira coming across yep. here to fill that gap. Right, so yeah. on the left Sorry, hand... I'll create some more space for you. <laughs> <laughs> on the left hand side of the diamond, right, so I'm going to have Alex Iwobi. He's going to be on the left hand side of the diamond. Yep. All right. On the right hand side of the, the, the diamond, we're going to have Aaron Ramsey. I don't care that he's leaving, I'm going to Juve. At the moment, I want him in the team on the right hand side. Right hand side when he's to play against Wenger. He never really used to work. Oh, this, it, actually, he? That's, that's an excellent thing at the right. You see, when he's to play on the right, Wenger used to play on the right. Never yeah. used to work, did he? But he played. He always right, cuts yeah, inside. No, he, he, he played on the right wing on the Wenger. I'm putting him now. I want him right back, hand side back of the in, diamond. Right, right hand side of the diamond. There's okay. a difference. And then I'm going to play him, <coughs> and I'm going to put this in massive letters for Kenny Ken. 
crap a league, Anna. <laughs> Uh, Mesut Ozil's a big guy now, I keep telling you. <laughs> I mean, Kenny are fine. Uh, I love Kenny. So there's Mesut right. Ozil at yep. the front of the diamond. And remember we said about the lack of creativity yep. in front of the box, in that key area. And then, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put Lacazette. And Aubameyang. I love this team. Now, if you look at this, Robbie, have you noticed one thing about Aubameyang? Him and Laka are close together. Yeah. Here. He's not out here. He's not out here. Mm. He's there. And we've got Ozil. These three, I think, are the crown jewels of the team. And I want Ozil playing these two guys in. And I want these mm. two guys to be working back in a three uh, uh, when out of possession. And I want, if Bellerin's going up here to combine with maybe Meza, I want Ramsey to fill back in. Mm. I want Ramsey to be disciplined. I would be saying if I was his manager, I want you back here defending. Because he's a, never disciplined. Though, no, but he can be. Yeah, he, he has done it. Mm. Though. And I, when Awobi's going up here combining with Kolasinac, I want Torreira coming here. But even if Ramsey is forward, I want Torreira to come across. So basically, I think the key to this structure of this team is the diamond here. You've got the mm. Torreira at the base who can see everything. You've got a Wobie who can combine with Kolasinac. Then Ram Ramsey really has got to pick and choose his runs. If Ozil's combining out wide with Bellerin, Ramsey mm. can fit in there in centrally. It is pretty fluid, but ultimately, you've got like a, for the protection, you've got these four players. It's like a midfield, four diamond, Torreira at the base, Ozil at the tip. And these two players, if you notice, they are hard mm. running midfielders with energy. You can get up and down the pitch. Mm. No Xhaka. No Jacker, and that was the call to leave him out. Not based on the fact that he's, mm. he gave away the goal on Saturday. Not based on the fact that he makes mistakes. I just think when you're playing this midfield four, there's only mm. room for one player. You need Jacker. He's not very mobile. He can't get up and down on that left hand side like a Wobi mm. can. I want my midfielders here to be lots yeah. of energy and to get up and down, Robbie. I would slightly only change I'd make. I like this team. I really, really like this team, right? But I would uh, take out Kolasinac here. Right? Because I just don't feel this guy's good enough playing a left back. I don't think he's disciplined enough, right? He just he will he won't stick to that. He'll be gone up the field, you know. He'll leave a big hole exposed. It's got to be Monreal for me. Monreal, if he's fit, Monreal goes into there, and then I've got Kalasinac as an option. When he's blowing later on, yeah. I can bring Kalasinac on as a left winger. Yeah, that's what I do. But I like that diamond. I do think Torreira is the sort of guy who can get around. I would have doubts about Ramsey keeping his discipline because he's got... But then this is a team, what I look at, like you said, that can create, that can hurt. But the key to this team is this guy here, Ozil. And is the manager going to play? Is the manager got any faith in him whatsoever? And, you know, when he's in this position takes a bit of pressure off of him because these guys can work in and yeah. <clears throat> the other f option you can do is you could have that sort of two man, you know, behind him sort of thing. And, On the pivot. Yeah. yeah. But I like that team. I like that team. I think that, listen, and that is a must win game. Yeah. If we lose that game, it's curtains. United are some of the same points as us now. You know, I, um, I can see them getting fourth place now, I honestly can. Uh, the funny thing is about it, a guy was pointing out to me and he's saying, actually, there could be two places up for grabs now in that top four. Because Tottenham are starting to slip up. <laughs> we're, we're, what, they're, they're, they're now starting to slip down. They've lost two games, um, you know, against Wolves and Man United as well. So and if Harry Kane's out for any period of time. And Song's gone off there. Song's gone off. Yeah, yeah. Maybe this two. So we've got to, listen, it's about getting back on track. This team's come off the tracks. And it's been what what I think I feel a bit sorry for Emery because he's having to work with what he's got. He doesn't fancy a lot of players in that team, and also he's not being backed by the you know by the owner of the club. He's not giving him the funds to get into a transfer market. Loan players, I mean, you know, and even if a Denis Suarez comes into what well, I presume Denis Suarez would be here yeah. instead of Ramsey. But we have to say that um, we are where we are because of uh, poor contract negotiations and mm. mishandling of contracts by Gazidis uh, and Wenger in the last few years. And I remember you called it, I yeah. remember like doing yeah. an interview with you after yeah. the game where you said, um, I was asking you about Gazidis and his legacy <laughs> and you was very, very damning. That was on a day when there's a few people bigging up them and saying, well, at least he did this right. And you were like, no, no, no. you see it for a long time yeah. off. You said, this guy's not done anything good business for us. 
you know, and now it's the, I, I, the proof is the, in the pudding. I think the key is, I mean, we've got the, the, the sponsorship money, the, the Adidas, is it, money coming in next year? Yeah. yeah uh, we've got the, the sponsors money coming next year, so we would have funds to buy players in the summer. But, uh, <laughs> but for, for me now, the key is to work with the, what, the best players we've got now. And um, if he's sending a message to the board, I just wonder who's going to win that, that sort of uh, battle. You know, mm. Ozil is on 350 grand a week, and if he chooses not to go anywhere, the board could be saying to Emery, "You've got to work with this player." Do you remember when Emery took the job? He actually said uh, he impressed the board. He had a blueprint for every player, how to mm. get the best out of every player. Less than eight months on, our two most creative players, he, he no longer mm. deems good enough to be, or, or he doesn't want them in the team. Mm. Now, All right, well, listen, um, Graham. Thank you as always. I want to ask everybody out there, what do you think of Graham's team, first of all? Scratch Monreal out, yeah, um, classic <laughs> action there, right? Graham's team or my team, actually, which team would you go with? Would you go with something completely different for that massive game against Chelsea? Do they want Ozil back in there? Do you want Ozil back in? Do I, you want him? I want him in. You want him in? Kenny Ken, do you want him in? <laughs> <laughs> Lee, you want him in? Um, let us know what your views are on it. My view is, I think Ozil has to be in the team.